Hi, my name is Fernando Perez and I'm a guitarist from Spain specialized in music from different cultures applied to the guitar. And this piece you just heard is called Jazz Manouche. Uh, I'm about to explain you how to play this piece, but before that I would like to give you a little background on the Jazz Manouche. Okay, this style, Jazz Manouche, is also known as Gypsy Jazz. Um, although it sounds very much like jazz, it has a lot of Eastern influences. Now what happened is the next, there were some people uh, in India, in the western side of India, in the Tar Desert. These tribes or people that were called like Langas, Manganillas, uh, Kadelias, they were living there, we still can find them there. But many years ago they left their homeland and they started traveling. Now, they went through Persian countries and Arab countries and Turkey and Greece and they got into the Eastern Europe countries and finally they got to France. Now, when they were already in Europe, the Europeans, they thought they were Egyptians. That's why they called them gypsies. But they were not, of course. So, there in France, they were bringing already all the influences from all these countries that I just mentioned. But besides that, when they got there, they got influenced by jazz and all the swing sound from those times. And that's how they created their own sound, which became what we call jazz manouche or gypsy jazz. All right, so I'm about to start explaining you how to not only play this song, but also how to create those kind of sounds and techniques so you can make also your own. But first thing, let's get ready and let's get in tune so we can be on the same pitch. I'm using just a standard tuning, so start on the sixth string, which is E. Fifth, A. Fourth, D. Third, G. Second, B. And the last one, first, E. Okay, so we're gonna go part by part. So I'll explain you all the tricks and then we'll put them all together. First thing is the intro, okay? We start with a A minor arpeggio. The basic form of the A minor arpeggio will be this. which we will finish like this. But now what I'm doing is coming to every note of the arpeggio from half step before, doing like this. See, I'm doing a hammer-on. As you can see on my right hand, everything is just played with the thumb. Okay, on the last two notes you could even switch to first uh, index and middle fingers, no problem. Okay, so from here we're gonna go to a chord which is what I call the terrifying chord. It's a minor chord with a major seven. In this case, an A minor with a major seventh. So I put it in this way, and I add the bass on the open string. But now, the trick here is going to be on the right hand. I'm going to show you a technique that we use a lot in flamenco. It's called abanico. Abanico in flamenco means a fan. It's like the ladies open the fan and they start going like this. Okay, so it's the shaking of the hand 
that we use to get the technique fast, okay? But now this is what happens. We have the right hand and we're gonna be rotating from the wrist, okay? We're not going up and down, we're rotating. But now we have two movements, going up and going down. But even if we do this fast, it's, gonna be, it's not gonna be fast enough. So we need to hit more times the strings with only two movements, up and down. So what we're gonna do is, when we go up, we're gonna hit with the nail of the thumb, like this. But now when we go down, very slowly, first we're gonna hit with the uh, middle and ring fingers, and then on the same movement down, we're gonna hit with the thumb. So look, up with the thumb, and going down on one movement, middle and ring, thumb. I'll do it a couple of times, very slow. Okay, very important that you don't go, when you go down, you rotate the hand down. You don't go down. And even, less, you cannot go down and go down two times. No, we want to just rotate. So practice is very slow and get it right because the speed is very easy. If you really get the movement right, the speed you already have it because everybody, unless you have a physical problem, anybody can just shake the hand real fast. So what we're doing is just using this natural speed but using the trick of putting the fingers the way I just showed you. Okay, so with the speed will be something like Okay, so let's go back to our A minor major 7 chord and we apply this technique. And you can even start very slow and then just go faster. And increase the volume. So we have the... from here we take the G sharp on the first string and we go all the way to B chromatically. We have the chord. Now if you look at my right hand you'll see how I'm using the ring, the middle and the index. You could do this index middle, it's no problem. But you will find that it will be easier if you just go And now I'm just gonna continue here. I'm gonna go on the same arpeggio A minor, three strings. So we'll it's just this phrase. I'll play with the index middle on the right hand, no problems. a little sweep in here and then and from here we go to F and we apply is an F7 just a normal F7 and we just apply the abanico again and same thing just to give it the mystery we start slow and soft and we go faster and louder And now we have the same trick. We're gonna do the F major triad arpeggio with the same trick of playing every note in the arpeggio, half step down, and then with a hammer on, falling on the note of the arpeggio. Again, everything just with the thumb in the right hand. all the way to A and from A we continue chromatically okay and from here we go to a G sharp diminished chord which we're gonna go up in one step and a half 
but we apply the abanico. And the higher, the faster and the louder. Okay, one trick is that right here, you can touch with the first finger, you can touch the fifth string and mute it. See? You can see right there my first finger on the left hand is touching the fifth string. So it doesn't sound right there. Okay? This one here. So I'm doing the chord, I'm muting the fifth string, and why? Because if I want to get louder, I can use the, the sixth string open. So I make it more dramatic. I start on the on the bottom strings only. And now I add that sixth string. But we don't want the fifth string there. Okay? So now I'm gonna come down from here with a diminished arpeggio doing this trick like this. I start the arpeggio and I play the first string open. Okay, and look at the fingering on the right hand, index, thumb, uh, middle. So the same arpeggio I, I will play just one time, but I will go back down. Okay, let's see here now on the left hand, we can see how we go down. I'm doing the same thing, but going one step and a half down, because it's the diminished arpeggio, and my open E string is giving me time to change the left hand. And from here we make a round. Okay, this is very simple, you can just follow the score. And right hand is only playing index and middle. But on the left hand, it's very important on the left hand that you switch right here. On the second string, you slide. Look again. Slide. Otherwise, you might get stuck when you're trying to go down on the scale. Same thing, it's a nice trick to start slow and then speed up. And then I go to this ninth chord, E ninth. And right here on my first finger, I'm gonna go chromatically up. Okay. On my right hand, I'm just playing with thumb, index, middle, and ring. See, all of them. And from here, we're gonna take this chord. Okay? But the way we take it is we're gonna do the abanico, and we're, not, we're gonna come from down here, and we're gonna start just sliding the fingers, no matter from, wh from where. You can even give this flavor of coming down half a step and then going up, like. Now this is flexible, on these stops in the intro you can stay as long as you want and give it more drama, okay? And I continue with the next part, chromatic, going from C sharp on the first string to E. And then I'm going down on the A minor arpeggio with the same trick as at the beginning. to G, G13, and Abanico. And now I'm gonna go up from G, just playing a whole tone scale. Okay, right hand is just index middle, normal playing, and left hand just going up on the scale. sound, yeah, it's pretty cool, eh? Okay, 
and from here we jump to C7. And from C7, we're gonna go to the first inversion of C7, but how we go? This is our target, so we go one step down, and we're gonna go up chromatically. So we'll be C C7, now file 7, down to E7, and when we finish the abanico we're gonna hit the 6th string. Okay, just make sure you try to surprise with that 6th string. So here I wouldn't go too loud with the abanico, otherwise the 6th string is not going to be surprising. And just an F minor arpeggio. And if you look at my right hand, you see how I'm doing with the thumb, thumb. So here you can do thumb and index, or just thumb, thumb, index, middle. Okay, so it's like... Same thing, try to just throw it sweeping fast and surprising. And then we just go down here from E on the A harmonic minor scale. Now on these runs it's very important to know when we are shifting positions on the left hand with a slide or somewhere else. Slide. So here we shift the position. Shift here. You see we do a double shift from here. Slide, slide. So we are ready for what is coming next. I do it again very slow. Right hand, just index and middle. Okay. And same thing, start slow and go a little bit faster. Okay. From here, we're gonna start doing the abanico. And little by little, we have the E and the G sharp here. And we're gonna start adding notes to complete the E seventh. Okay, and we're gonna be doing like this. So we'll be. And of course, getting louder and faster. And from here to the same chord we just saw on the A minor right here. So this will be like an A minor with the ninth and with the the thirteenth right here. So we will we'll do the same thing. We'll come from down here. Okay, I'm gonna do it from the E seventh. When you do the slide here, don't be in a rush. Just hold it there and, and create more expectation, you know? And now you just shoot it. Just like that. Or you can just put the core. So this will be the intro.